stand in my way. The way <coughs> of the fist. Unleash the beast. This end is the Falcon. Death wind. The end. The soul burns with us. Unleash the beast. From the clouds, break the storm! So, you guys want to learn the Eternal Rage style. And I'm here to do just that. So we're going to do a quick overview of what I have on. Talk about the sigils. Talk about our skills, our overmastery, and then maybe go into a little general combat tips, alright? So let's jump right into it. Also, I'm doing this just as one take. If I am pausing or serving any moment, please just bear with me. As, as I give myself time to think. Alright, so, general overview. Right now we are at about 19k power. We got 44k HP, 13k attack, some pretty high crit rate, and some decent stun power at 130. We're using the Golden Fist Aura, that is the Awakening Weapon, or the Ascension Weapon. Uh, we'll go over the sigils in a little bit. Uh, the skills real quick, we have the Iron Shoulder, that is really good for mobility, and it's heavy hitting. And you can chain into your normal combo, which is great. We have the Arhat Skybreaker that it, it goes up into the air which is really nice to avoid some attacks and then come back down with an explosion it's nice aoe damage we also have the infernal stomp that is a slow it's really good really lets you uh maximize your damage maximize your team's damage output in crucial moments and then we also have the branding palm that is a counter and it's pretty much a get out of jail free card uh, i'll show you how that works a little later so we also have the support skills. So like what's what's Ghana Goza's general game plan, right? He uses the Eternal Rage style. Ghana Goza's Raging Fist charges faster and deals more damage based on his Eternal Rage. That's this meter that he has. Combo finishers and link attacks gather Eternal Rage. And enter the fist enhances perfectly timed square attacks when they are chained in a combo. This is crucial. This is super important to him. If you are not timing these, or if you just want to press square, like match it away, do not pick this character. You will not do any damage, and your teammates will hate you. <laughs> so let's go into the sigils. Alright, so just touch on the weapon a little more. As I said, this is the Ascension weapon. I have it fully upgraded, fully awakened. That's why the stats are pretty crazy. Uh, but, you know, if you're not at this part, that's fine. I would highly recommend using the Crimson Finger out of the default weapons, right? So why is that? Let's just take a quick look at them. The Brahma Comet, this is the one you start with. Stats are decent. It's got nice HP, 2000 attack. It's not bad. The, uh, the Executioner one, it's pretty good attack, 3000, but then... Your HP is super low. Like, if you look on the bottom left, I'm losing s almost 6k HP if I put this on. So that's, I, I wouldn't recommend that. And then the stunner one. Decent HP and then pretty good attack. This is honestly kind of like the reverse of the Brahma Gauntlet. As you can see, like, the health and attack pretty much switch. But, uh, it's not a bad option. But then if you go to Crimson Finger, see this one's like... The overall like best one like it's just even though it's nice and the most important part is the traits that it comes with see this comes with HP garrison that's all right weak point damage honestly doesn't really do anything break assassins is okay and then the last one stun power is great you know but you don't really want to have you don't really need level 25 stun power but linked together is pretty good but this one, best part, it comes with 25, level 25 crit hit rate. Crit hit rate is super important in this game. You definitely want that. So I would for sure recommend that if you do not have the Ascension weapon. So now the sigils. 
we have Krabby Resonance. Uh, this is pretty much like a free thousand attack if you have all the crabs. But uh, you could honestly switch this out if you want to. It's not really letting you go over your damage cap, but it will kind of ensure that you're at that damage cap on most of your attacks. Without it, like maybe a little less of my attacks won't reach the damage cap. War Elemental, you get this from Curios. This is great. It gives you elemental advantage versus any boss, which is super important for Ganagoza as he's fire and not many bosses are weak to fire. It's only effective against wind and there's maybe like two or three bosses that will be wind. So we also have the Eternal Rage Awakening. This is his character trait. Uh, honestly, Eternal Rage's metal isn't really important, but Eternal Rage's ethos is. I'll get into that a little later when we go into the trait levels. So if you could get that, if you can get this, Eternal Rage's ethos plus, and then it has a secondary skill of something else, like maybe utility or attack or anything like that, that would be your best bet. Now crit hit rate plus, for sure you need some crit rate, and it comes with stamina, stamina is amazing. I'll also get into that. Uh, damage cap 5. Damage cap is probably one of the most important skills in the game. If you don't know about this, there's plenty of YouTube vids out there. It pretty much... This is the thing that will increase your highest possible damage. Not boosting it with attack power or anything like that. Damage cap. Comes with regen. It's not like ideal, but it's, it's nice to have. If you could get this maybe with like... Aegis or some other utility, that'd be great. We have an attack power 5 with some more stamina, some more damage cap. We have a link together 5. Link together is super slept on. Like this is gonna give you a lot of bonuses to your link attacks, your link level gain, your link attack damage. Ooh. And this will pretty much get you to link time faster, which is the like very important. Like, when you're in link time, that is when he gives out his highest possible damage output. So you for sure want to get to that. We have some more damage cap 5. Another link together. And supplementary damage. This is great. It, uh, it pretty much just adds like a nice little extra attack. Sometimes to any of your attacks. And it does about 10 or 20% of the, the attack it's supplementing. And then quick cooldown. It's, it's nice to have. You want to have your, your skills a little faster. So now we go into the trait levels. We have Sigil Booster. This is coming from the Ascension weapon. When you fully awaken it. This pretty much, like I said, raises the trait level of all your Sigils by one. Which, you know, is just great value. Attack, I have it maxed out. That's, that's nice to have. HP, it's not super important. It came with the weapon. I'm not complaining about that. You know, little 3k extra, that's nice to have. Damage cap, for sure you want this maxed out. Level 65, if you don't have this maxed out, you are missing out on damage. Crit hit rate, another one. This doesn't have to be all the way at 100%, but I would say for sure you want it in like mid to high 90s. Again, if you don't have this, you will be missing out on damage. I think crits are like double your damage. Now stamina, I mentioned stamina earlier. Stamina is amazing. This boosts your attack by a certain percent based on how high your health is. And there's a couple other ones that do similar stuff like Tyranny and I, I believe Enmity. But those decrease your health. You don't want to decrease your health when you have stamina that boosts your attack and encourages you to have you know full health, which is what you want to do in every fight, right? And if we take a look at it, boost attack by max is 60%, right? I might pull up my calculator real quick. We're at 13k attack. If I times that by 0.6, it's 7,800. So it's almost boosting my attack by 8,000, right? And when I have full health. Compared to, if we take a quick look at Tyranny, even at Tyranny 5. This is boosting my attack only by 2,000. And then I'm also losing almost 9,000 HP. You don't want that. 
You definitely don't want that. Alright. Alright, so linked together. I have it at level 27 with my two sigils. This link level gain is almost plus 50%. Super good. Chambers damage plus 18 to 47%. That's just free damage. Link attack damage is almost plus 100%. That's great. And your super will also be plus 47%. Supplement to do damage. Like I said, it's just a chance for normal attacks and skills, damage skills, to deal a little extra damage. And this it's kind of like ignores the damage cap. It doesn't ignore it, but it's like you're adding more damage to your attacks that would be there. War Elemental. Yeah, it gives you elemental advantage, except for plain element attacks. There are bosses later in the game that are not, they don't have any elemental weakness. So if you're going against those, I usually switch this out for in like Aegis or something like that. Or even like Cry Rest event returns. We need to look at Aegis, like this is plus almost 13k health. This is great to have. So if you, if you, if you're not getting any elemental damage versus specific boss, swap that out for some utility. Regen, that was just a side skill that came with something. Not bad to have. Same with quick cooldown, not bad to have. Yeah, cry we resonance, thousand attack. Oh, and uh, here's the his character traits, right? Eternal Rage's Metal is the first one. This, oh, hold on. Sorry. So this boosts your crit hit rate based on your eternal rage, but like I said, we already have a high crit rate. This is, is pretty much doing nothing at all. So if you could get at those by itself with something else, see at those boost raging fist damage cap. That is your charge triangle. That is your strongest attack where all your damage comes from. So damage cap plus 50 on that. Amazing. All right, so let's go into the skills. Like I said, I have the shoulder tackle, iron shoulder. We have the R has skybreaker, goes into the air, comes down, boom. The branding bomb, that is the counter. And it will fill up your eternal rage by five. That's amazing. And then the infernal snob, this is a slow, I'm not sure the exact time, but it lasts pretty long. <coughs> now the other possible skills that I'm not using, they're all pretty much buffs. Uh, let's see this first one we have grants attack plus to the entire party and increases the eternal rage the it gives you free three to your eternal rage which is great but the attack boost I used to er use this early game it's pretty good but then as I got more to mid and end game I realized this isn't even giving me more damage because I'm already at the damage cap so this it wasn't really doing anything for me it does give it to the rest of your team, but at this point, most people are also at their damage cap, so it's not really doing much. So you don't want to, like, waste a slot on this. Lion Stance gives Hostility, Stout Heart, and Jammed. Hostility makes you more likely to be attacked or targeted, so the boss will focus on you more. That's, to me, is not great. Stout Heart, you know, kind of counteracts that. Taking damage doesn't interrupt your actions, so they will be targeting you, but you can still fight through everything. And then you have Jammed. Attack is boosted based on how low your HP is. This is the part that turns me off. I don't want to have low HP. I want to be high HP. I don't want to be constantly attacked. So that's why I don't use this. Eternal Rage instantly max out the meter. But if you're fighting, if you're doing your thing, you're going to max it out anyway. It's It's nice. Get an extra little punch in there, but uh, a raging fist punch. But I don't, I don't think it's worth a slot. And this one, honestly, I think is the worst one. It restores his HP and removes debuffs, but it only applies to yourself. And look at the little video clip. Look how long this animation lasts. So you're gonna be sitting at the edge of the map or something away from boss, healing yourself up. Your teammates are gonna be pissed. What is this guy doing over here? You know? So, I would avoid that one. So, let's go to the masteries real quick. So, I have offense, it's 100%, defense is 100%. The collection, these are the weapons 
guys for sure you want to buy every weapon and level it up all the way and and get all these uh buffs here because these are not tied to the weapon they will be tied to your character so these are like permanent buffs to your character some of them are even insane like hp plus 2000 plus 5000 attack plus 200 like this is crazy crit rate crit hit damage plus 30 percent you need that all right <laughs> so the overmastery if we look at what we have here right now i have health up plus 400 that's not too great but skill damage cap up plus 16 amazing critical hit rate plus 20 amazing normal attack damage cap up plus 16 that is probably the most important one if you look at the possible bonuses from these you can see we have attack power up that's nice but if you're at the cap it's not gonna do anything crit hit rate up for sure you want that skill damage up is also nice but in the same vein as the attack power if you're already at the cap it's not gonna do anything chambers damage up that's really doesn't matter skill damage cap up you definitely for sure want that healing cap up i honestly don't care for that health up i also don't really care for that if i get a nice health boost sure but uh you know don't focus on that stun power up is also nice to have but not super necessary skybone or damage up it's whatever now normal attack damage cap up that is what you want for sure if you could get this at max for plus 20 percent put that on asap this is going to apply to of course your normal attacks but raging fist the charge punch that counts as a normal attack so that would directly buff that Skybound heart damage cap up, uh, doesn't really matter. Yeah. So, with that being said, let's go into some general combat tips. Hit the training room real quick. The fruits of my training. I'm just gonna turn our school kill now. Skill cooldown instant, just for demonstration. Stand in my way. The way of the fist. All right, so his game plan. We can actually look at the command list. It's not too long, right? What you want to do every single time is combo B or air combo B. It says square and then perfect square, square, etc., etc. Then you have the raging fist. That's the charge punch. Launch. That's every character's launch. You, you jump and press square, right? That's also pretty good to lead into your air combo B. Aerial barrage. I really don't really use this too much. Okay, so the normal combos, right? They're square, 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 whatever. If we just mash... So let, let me go over here so it's not facing target. If we just mash it, this is what you get, right? It's a five attack. You get a you know punch, punch, little fist slamming the ground. Oh, hold on. Yeah, and then that double punch. So like punch, punch, fist in the ground, and that straight punch with fly, right? But if we time it, you're gonna see it gives a little flash, and the attacks will actually change. So it'll be punch, punch, a stomp. Uh, mess it up. Punch, punch. Oh. Stomp. And then this big explosion. That's what's that final hit is what's gonna put your meter up. As you can see in the bottom right there's a little arrow raises eternal rage on hit. That is the final hit of your combos. Even the regular combo A will give you that. But that's what you want to go for. You also have the air ones. It's just three, and if you do it, it's just like fun. Well, let me do the regular one. Just punch, punch, and a double punch, right? But if you do the timing, it's a spin kick and a double spin kick. And it goes pretty far, I'm not gonna lie. And you can even dash and do it again. Alright. So let's look at the differences between timing it and not timing it, right? So if I just walk up, I'm just in mass square. Just blah, blah, blah. Everything's doing 50k, like, that's it. Alright. 
a look at that again so we can see the total damage. The way of the fist. Yeah. But yeah, it's just reaching 50k and not passing that. And the last punch, all together does 270k, right? Now we do that same combo, but timing it. Let our fists rebel. We're gonna see. We did 630k, and we get the link attack filled up, and our eternal rage got filled up for a little extra, you know, this is ridiculous, almost 1.7 mil. So we went from 200k to 670, and then plus the extra stuff we gained along the way, 2.7 mil. Like, if we do the regular attack, look at this link meter. By the end of it, it's only halfway. But if you're timing the attacks, look how much faster it's filling up. On the fourth hit, it's already full. And it's the same case if we go to the aerial attacks, right? Let me do the uppercut and just mask square. Oh. Uppercut and just mask square. Oh, I'm missing. Okay. Oh, I'm not targeting him. <laughs> Stand in my way. The way of the fist. Yeah. So yeah, three hits, 209k, also no link attack, right? I shall break the and now if we time it instead. Uppercut. The link almost filled up completely and we're at 320k instead. So it's a nice difference and we also fill up our meter. If you do these, you can dash after and do another string, right? That's gonna be an amazing option. Because if you're doing, like, you wanna fill up your meter, right? But if you're doing the ground combo, you're kind of a sitting duck a little bit. It takes more hits. It's like a five hit combo instead of a three hit combo. It does fill up the meter more from the last hit, but honestly, your meter is going to fill up from two combos no matter what, unless you're getting a link attack in between. As the link attack also adds three. But yeah, if you're doing the ground combo, they could definitely hit you out of stuff, but if you are do if you do the air combo instead, I've noticed a lot of boss attacks do not actually hit in the air, they're kind of just slow to the ground. So if you just do the air... Hmm? If you just do the air combo, you know, then, then roll and do another one, that is just an instantly, that's two combos, that's going to completely fill up your thing, you just land on the ground, and boom, you just did crazy damage. Alright, so that's the general game plan. If we, if we do these skills, as I said, the iron shoulder, you know, he doesn't really have too much mobility, the iron shoulder just flies across the screen. And you can actually, if you time your square input, you'll see the flash and you can go straight into your your normal combo. This, this is a great starting starting play. Anytime I, I start any quest to the boss, I'm just going to tackle them, do my combo, I'm going to get my link attack, and then just instantly punch them. And boom, they, are, they already lost 3 mil, like come on. Alright. Now the Arha Skybreaker. It goes Arha. into the air. A lot of, like I said, a lot of attacks usually hit the ground, or maybe they'll move around. This kind of like tracks even after he's in the air. If they, if he jumps in the air and they moved, this will adjust to where they moved and still hit them, right? So you know, you could do like, you could be hitting them, you see an attacks coming, just pop that, dodge the attack, you're hitting them, and then you just go right back to your offense. It's great. Then you have the Infernal Snop. This is just slow. Does great damage. Not just a debuff, it still deals damage. And you can see this guy is going to be slow for quite a while. Yeah, you see? So that's really good. If you ever get like a knockdown, if they're about to go into overdrive, anything like that, you want to just squeeze in some more attacks, you hit this, your team is going to recognize that instantly. Everyone's going to just dish out crazy damage. And now the counter, I'm going to put him to the attack. 
so we can see that. Nope, how to restart. You stand in my way. The way of the fist. Okay, so he's attacking now. All right, so yeah, the counter, you press it, he enters the stance, and he holds it for quite a while. That was like a good two or three seconds, right? Well, That entire time you're in that stance, I'm not pressing anything. If they touch you at all, you will fly, like literally teleport to them. If they're already next to you, you know, you'll stay in place. But if someone's at range and you with a range attack and you counter it, Gana Goza will teleport to them. As long as there's nothing like blocking the path and and do the attack. So that also helps the mobility, it helps counter range attacks and it fills up your meter. So let's see what how it goes. I'll pop it. Look at that. I didn't press anything. All I did was press the counter activation button. And I can just sit here, right? Is he gonna attack? Come on, Sir Barrel. Okay. Yeah. See, you don't have to time it. It does crazy damage, fills up the link meter, fills up your eternal rage. Like this is a great get out of jail free card. Let's say there's a huge AOE attack coming. Maybe you're already on your last dodge or you're not confident in dodging it. Just pop that. It, this goes through like almost anything. And then we'll just continue your offense. So that's really good. What the... That is kind of most of it. Oh, uh, that aerial barrage, I'll just show real quick. When you press triangle in the air, it just comes down. It's not too crazy. Like I said, if I'm in the air, I'm usually gonna do the air combo, roll, air combo again, link or whatever, and you know, I'm already on the ground, I'm gonna punch. So I don't necessarily use this too much. But I'm sure there's times where it comes like maybe you just want to get to the ground like right away or straight down who knows but yeah that's that's pretty much the move any other questions you guys have or stuff you're curious about just let me know in the comments down below if there's anything else you guys want to see maybe a certain boss fight I will put that up for you guys all right so thanks for watching Hope you guys pick up this character. There's not many too many people using this character right now. I rarely see them online. So let's let's get the Eternal Rage army bigger. Bigger and stronger. Victory goes to the biggest muscles. Reject impossibility. He has the best quotes. <laughs> Alright guys, see you.